I will call the will be there? government oversight committee meeting uh, February 2nd to order. First item on the agenda is Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is adoption of the agenda. Romano adopts the agenda. Support NARD. I have a motion by Commissioner Romano, supported by Commissioner NARD. Any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, please vote. Motion passes 13 to 0. Thank you. Next item is approval of the minutes dated December 8th. 2022. Motions in order. Motion to approve. Support Perna. Motion by Commissioner Van Sicko, supported by Commissioner Perna. Any discussion on the meeting minutes? Seeing none, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0 to 1. Commissioner Lucido abstaining. Thank you. Before we move into public participation, I'm going to take the liberty of offering happy birthday to our chairman who is 60 today. Happy oh, birthday, birthday, Chairman. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. You're he didn't want me to tell his age, but I did. <laughs> Next item is our first of two <laughs> public participations. This public public participation is for any agenda items please limit your remarks to three minutes anyone from the public wish to be heard going once twice what what was that question is it only for the agenda Thank yes you this is okay. just for agenda Even items. Late, I'm sorry. Sure. I'll go first hi good afternoon my name is Krista Carpenter, and I'm here on behalf of Hearts for Homes. Hearts for Homes is a nonprofit organization right here in Mount Clemens. Our mission is helping homeless children and their working families find safe, affordable housing in our county. Uh, we also assist families at risk of eviction with rental assistance. And to date, this year alone, we've already assisted 11 families, and that equates to 27 children in uh, just Macomb County. We, um, our clients are the working uh, poor in our county, and we are here in support of Advancing Macomb. Hearts for Homes supports Advancing Macomb's mission to help people, families, and children who are underserved in our county. Advancing Macomb is invested and supports other nonprofits in reaching and achieving their goals and missions. Advancing Macomb makes a visible difference in our communities. Hearts for Homes is here to express their continued support of Advancing Macomb. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wish to be heard? Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Lauren Brosh. Um, I am a Macomb County resident, 56416 Addison Drive in Shelby Township. Um, I am here um, with Consumers Energy. I'm the Community Affairs Manager for Macomb and St. Clair County. And I am also here on behalf of support for Advancing Macomb. Um, I'm a board member with Advancing Macomb. I also serve on the board for um, the Macomb County Habitat. Macomb County Chamber of Commerce, um, Six Rivers Land Conservancy, as well as NAMI, Michigan. Um, I'm here to support the mission of Advancing Macomb and to advocate for the funding to move their mission forward. Uh, the ARPA dollars here uh, that we're gonna discuss today are critical to, for Advancing Macomb to continue to drive philanthropic dollars here in the county. Um, these dollars are going to support the county as well as its residents and its pressing needs. I'm asking for support as a believer in um, advancing Macomb. I'm a personal investor. Um, I'm a county resident as well as a corporate representative of Consumers Energy. 
Um, so thank you in advance to the board for this consideration. So. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wish to be heard? Hello. Thank you. Um, I am here on behalf of Advancing Macomb. My name is Cheryl McCoy, and I work with Disaster Services Corporation, um, a sister corporation of Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Um, we are brand new into the area, and we are providing disaster case management for those who experienced the flood from June of 2021. We have over 2,600 survivors that have um, reported disaster from that flood in the area of Macomb. I am one of the case managers and one of the supervisors of the program, and this is a new program, and we are partnership with FEMA. <clears throat> Our mission is to um, assist those that, um, through the programs and services in the county to those that have um, identified disaster. So advancing Macomb is a critical part. We are very new to this, so we um, are very um, dependent on the funding for our other supports in federal and grant and other monies that are available to help our survivors. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? We kind of knew you were going to be coming up. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, thank you for having us. My name is Dunya Barish from Families Against Narcotics. Um, we're here to support Advancing Macomb, but appreciate their advocacy that they do for nonprofits across our county. Um, many of you are familiar with Families Against Narcotics, but our mission is to compassionately assist individuals and families affected by substance use disorder and to create a healthy community that views addiction as a disease and treat those who suffer with it with respect and compassion. We are an organization that helps people and families impacted by substance use disorder in any way that we can um, help nonprofits um, and the advocacy um, that needs to be done across Macomb County, um, we're, we're here to support. So thank you so much. Would you like to take the opportunity to talk about your luncheon? Oh, absolutely. I actually have Go flyers. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, on Friday, February 10th, families... I feel like this shut off. It's on. It's on. Okay, on Friday, February 10th, Families Against Narcotics is hosting a Macomb County Legislative Lunch and Learn from 12 to 1.30. We invite all of you guys to attend. We'll have legislators um, from across the Macomb County delegation attending, and we would love for you guys to be there as well. So I will leave these um, right here for anyone to take, okay? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anyone else from the public wish to be heard? Hello, my name is Dr. Shaniva Early, and my organization is the Betty Harris Foundation. We um, uh, had a transition from the Betty Harris Larynx Cancer Awareness Center because of COVID. We was not able to do our mission, so we shifted. And Advance of Macomb was able to help us make that shift because we could not do our primary mission. They brought to us resources and people to help us so we can be able to complete our new mission, which is helping leaders become better and sustainable in their organizations. And also we do community service projects. So I'm here today to say that we really appreciate everything that Advance of Macomb has done for us. And we ask that you um, allow them to continue their mission. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? My name is Mo Leitz. I am the founder of Sparkle Network. Even though I am based in Oakland, 85 to 90% of what I do, including our events and the people we help in your communities, is in Macomb County. I'm here on behalf of Advancing Macomb, and because of the relationship we have, we're able to make a bigger impact in the area. We help high school seniors and high schoolers to all the way to senior seniors, and we help in ways that sometimes may seem a little Frivolous, but is big self-esteem from prom dresses and homecoming dresses and a scholarship for the high schoolers to helping families navigate Alzheimer's and dementia. Lived it and help others now do that. Being part of Advancing Macomb and helping them advance their mission helps makes things easier for families in Macomb County. So thank you. Thank you. I won't say anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, every time I stood up, somebody else stood up. So <laughs> wanted to be sure I got my words in. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren Cristola, and I'm here to represent the Ark of Macomb County. We are a 501c3 located right at Gratiot and just about N59. 
and we're celebrating 70 years this year in Macomb County, providing supports and services to individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, so our mission statement is the ARC is dedicated to securing for all people with individual and intellectual and developmental disabilities the opportunity to learn, live, and work throughout their lifetimes in the community we share, which oftentimes requires collaboration with our community. As a small nonprofit, we rely on organizations like Advancing Macomb to help us elevate our voice and connect with other organizations that resonate with our mission. Advancing Macomb has grown extensively since I started with the Ark of Macomb in October of 2021. They've been able to connect us with invaluable resources and networking. In February of last year, they hosted an event for nonprofits to network, and it directly resulted in over $5,000 in sponsorships for our golf outing that June. Another woman actually attended that event and supported an additional event for us this last December. 10 months after I connected with her at one of their events, she wanted to support our mission. We have been able to provide direct referrals to other organizations, such as MyCare, TCB Youth Mentoring, Chaldean Community Foundation, and New Way Works. This would have only been facilitated by Advancing Macomb. They have also been able to connect us to larger organizations, like DTE, Humana, Consumers Energy, and First State Bank, which we are a proud recipient of their bank's giving for this year, all thanks to Advancing Macomb. Because of Advancing Macomb and the information from meeting with them and outside direct funds have also connected us. Sorry, my notes are not right. <laughs> outside of direct funds, <laughs> Advancing Macomb has been able to connect us with um, some different volunteers that have helped with various events like our spring cleaning and our gift wrap. Local nonprofits also have a one-stop shop for what's going on in our sector in Advancing Macomb. And if any of you know how nonprofits are, we talk. We like to talk about what's going on in the sector. We have been able to introduce some of our existing connections to Advancing Macomb to help grow the nonprofits. I just did it 10 minutes ago with facilitating the introduction with Angela and Dave from CMH. So we can see how important it is to connect people in this community. We would not have an efficient and effective way to share information, referrals, resources, and grant opportunities with other nonprofits in Macomb if it wasn't for Advancing Macomb. I'm here today in support of advancing their mission to continue to grow the nonprofits in Macomb County so we have a happy place to live and where people want to come and raise their families. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Hi, good afternoon. My name is John McGrath. I'm the uh, Director of uh, Administration for the Monahan Company, and I'm a board member for Advancing Macomb. The Monahan Company is a four-generation, 100-year-old construction management firm that has been doing work in the Metro Detroit area uh, doing commercial construction. Um, many of our current projects focus on nonprofit development, and most of that development has been done in downtown Detroit. And I think there's a great opportunity for us to leverage the work of Advancing Macomb to bring the resources of these nonprofit organizations and investors into Macomb County to help it, it bring more resources to the people in need that are here. So I'm here to support the efforts of Advancing Macomb and I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Once, twice, We'll close public participation. Oh, <laughs> almost. Sorry. Um, I'm Kelly Walters. I work for First State Bank in Macomb County, and I'm a board member of Advancing Macomb. Advancing Macomb is a catalyst for both bolstering Macomb County nonprofits. And as you've heard, we connect resources to the community's needs. Um, and despite having the third greatest population among all our peers in Michigan and Metro Detroit, we sadly lack behind in regards to our peer groups for nonprofit sector. So it's not, Advancing Macomb is not only a proven catalyst for bolstering nonprofits, but it can also attract future resources for nonprofit projects that will help create a thriving and vibrant community. Um, and on that, that note, we just ask again that a one-time federal funding for long-term support of our nonprofit infrastructure is vital to ensure that we address our community's most pressing needs and we look for some assistance in this regard. Thank you in advance for your consideration. Thank you. I, 
didn't have to say it. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for listening to us today. My name is Maria Silomianos. Hello, Don. I'm the CEO of Collab PEO, and I've been a board member of Advancing Macomb since its inception many moons ago. And I have to say I'm very proud of the work that we do, and I wish to continue doing the great work that we do here in Macomb County for the various not-for-profit organizations. And I really wish that you would help consider helping us with our support, providing us support, so we can continue doing this work long into the future. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone left that would like to be heard? Going once, twice, public participation is now closed. Next item is item six, budget amendment, human resources and labor relations, human resource specialist, position 99,500. Motion to refer to full board, please. Moved by Nard, supported. Board, I have a motion by Commissioner Nard, supported by Commissioner Perna. Who would like to speak on this? I know, there she is. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Carlin Semlo, the Director of HR, and I thank you for putting this on the agenda today. Uh, we are coming to ask for a new position in our HR department. As you may recall, during our budget process, we had asked for a new position to be added to our budget called an HR specialist. It would be helping with our, primarily in our recruitment and our retention efforts here in Macomb County. Um, we are here today because the Department of Community Mental Health has offered us Sorry, I ran to the restroom um, uh, for the Kleenex. Um, community Mental Health has offered us some grant money to help us for the year of 2023 and 2024, hopefully, and into the future by assisting, um, by providing us some additional support. So we're very thankful for Dave Pankatai and his staff for doing that. And so the position we're asking for today um, is a position that will help um, tremendously in our department to help us with the recruiting and the retention efforts uh, primarily in community mental health, which uh, we have been working hard over the last couple of years to catch up on their um, ever-evolving job needs. So, Chairman of Community Mental Health, you're in agreement? Yes, I'm also on the speakers list, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't gotten to that yet. I was reading the explanation here with community mental health providing position would be fully funded through them. And I can tell you when it says 99.5 by increasing personnel expenditure 98 and internal uh, services expenditure by 1,000. When I read all that, the, my first thought was I need to ask Phil what that says. So let me get to the speakers list. It's just me. It's just you? Well, that's good because no one's coming up. Commissioner Kraft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, our, our Community Mental Health CEO is in the audience, Dave Pankatai. I've just asked if he could come up and speak to the importance of this position, if that would be okay with you. Without objection. And thank you, Carlin. Um, I'd like to support Advancing Macomb. Uh, <laughs> I think that's everybody now, right? Um, no, um, as Carlin mentioned, um, the evolving um, community mental health system. Um, during the pandemic, um, our needs of the in the community have increased dramatically. It took a while. I kept waiting for the our numbers to start really spiking and trending up. Um, I shared with our board of directors just earlier this week um, our call center data from uh, it shows the number of calls we get into our call center um, by month and it goes back three years every year so from 20 or from 21 to 22 to 23 our numbers keep trending up rather significantly we're up over 6,000 calls um, into our customer service line every month right now so now we're, we're looking to focus on access to services, and we need to grow and adapt. Um, the, the state has changed our contract requirements and is changing them. The, the speed of change has been just um, phenomenal. As a group, 
we've asked that the state to kind of slow down, pump the brakes a little bit. Um, they have not. Um, of course, children's mental health needs are increasing. Um, overdoses are up. We're reaching out now to the first responders, the police departments, EMS. Um, we're trying to, we're focusing on our crisis um, continuum. Um, lots of different areas of focus. So we've created more stress on the, the HR system. Um, as a heads up too, uh, we're actually working on a phase two, which we will be coming back in front of you asking to add some positions on the, the CMH side as well. And like I said, to meet the, the needs of our community. So in working with, with Carlin and her team, uh, we are in a position to, to fund the additional position um, and it's very much needed to really help us meet our needs and those of the our community. Thank you. Thank Commissioner you. Wallace. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for Carlin. Hi. I was hoping you can give me the expected timeline. So once this is approved, when do you expect to have it up and then uh, we find like the perfect match. What is the the timeline for them to be in in the door? Yeah. So actually, the position we just got approved in the twenty twenty three budget just closed for us last week. We're getting ready to do interviews next week, um, so that kind of gives you a time frame of that. We posted that I think the second week of January. So this is a really important position for us. The original one, and then this one just opened up as we created that new. Um, as we were able to shift the duties to figure out where our need was, this timing of this one is very important. We will be reposting this position again because I think it's important to notify the applicants that it's a grant-funded position. Um, I would feel terrible for someone to leave a job and not know that. So right. we'll be, um, if we get this position, likely posting it in the next week or so, maybe two weeks, and then a couple-week turnaround. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Chair Brown. Thank you. Um, uh, maybe bring uh, Mr. Pankatow up. Dave, if you come up. And they both, they both you can stay there. Had a lot of many years up at the board. I've never had a department head come up and give money out of their budget to fund another department, which is rather unique, especially an, an independent, really independent body like yours. Um, I guess that speaks to the need that you have. And it also raises the question and brings to the, the attention of how much our personnel department supports community mental health, which may go unnoticed often because you guys do a good job over there. Do you speak a little bit about that? I mean, is that true, Carmen? You've been around a long time too. Uh, how, much, uh, how much staff time do you take servicing the needs of community mental health? Because they've got a lot of positions, a lot of things going on over there. They do, and, and they're a unique department for us. Um, we actually have two of our consultants sharing the role over there, and it's still not enough. So this will be a third person that will be dedicated to working on the work there. I was reviewing some information before we came. Um, community mental health accounts for probably, they're about the third highest in terms of our traffic when it comes to our job activity of the postings that are going up. They have unique job descriptions, which is unusual for us. In the county, we don't have, we are, almost every one of their classifications or divisions has a unique job description, which is um, more difficult for us. And their background checks are uh, difficult to maintain as well. There's a tremendous, which is really important, I'm not using that as a complaint, but saying that that's an extra workload for us, and we're doing them annually for their employees on their anniversary date. So there's just a lot of checks and balances that come into play. Um, as well as all of the posting activity for them as well. Thankfully, they're a quiet department in the employee relations area, so it balances out in the long run. How many positions, Dave, do you have in your department? Um, completely staffed. We're just under 500. And we, like I said, we do plan on coming back in front of uh, this board asking to create some new positions. Uh, focus on integrated health. So we're looking to add case managers, care coordinators. Um, the nurse practitioners will create some issues because they're um, outside of the, the current um, tables and things like that too. 
but we do have a need for more prescribers. Um, like I said, the, the needs are just tremendous in our community right now. So we're really trying to grow and adapt as quickly as we can, especially now when we have the, the funds to do it. We have the, the employee matrix with all the positions that categorize the positions. That, what's the name of the, the term that they have? The, uh, the table? The, 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 grades? the pay grades, yes. And those are integrated into our system as well, is that correct? Correct, they're on our PTA schedule. Despite the specialty, I mean, every position over there is a specialty project because they have some of them require rec certain certification requirements, right, for the uh, job, in for order the to skills, build. the specialized yeah. skills, the counseling, and all the rest. Um, Which is why we have such unique job descriptions. They're a little more difficult to keep that ball rolling because of the uniqueness. But. Have you ever done this before, Dave? Or has it an apartment before your time that you're aware of ever you know, contributing actually, money out of your general fund to, to slide the fund positions that the county has that we support did it with, you? We did it with legal, and we added the assistant corporation counsel position. That was the, the first time we have done that. You better watch out. You're going to set a precedent. We're going to come to you for other positions <laughs> that we need because you're part of the team. And, uh, yeah. you know, we got – but, um, all right, well, I like the innovation because it, bottom line, it doesn't affect our bottom line. Right. It doesn't increase our budget because we're shifting money from one department to the other, which is very good. So Being as creative as we can be. <laughs> but it does good, create and, uh, problems. Like I said, be careful. We might be coming back to you for some other things. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Perna. Question. Is this a temporary part-time position? Uh, this will be a full-time position. The grant funding that Dave has indicated is available for is for 2023 and 2024. He thinks it will also st believe it will still be around for 2025. But at this point, we're looking at 2023 and 2024. I don't think I'll need to come back in 2025. I think it, it will be continued. Um, but if the position's not funded in 2025, I would have to reduce my staff by that person. Hired would know that, right? I'm going to make sure that that's known, yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. I, I don't have any grant-funded positions, so it's new for us, um, which is why it took us a little bit to get our mind wrapped around this concept. But um, I believe if we're clear about our expectations and what we have in front of us, we'll be able to walk through that process. I, I don't. I don't know. I, we've, we don't have a problem filling grant positions around the county uh, in general, but I do believe that people will be more hesitant to apply knowing it's not guaranteed. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Wallace and second round. Pass it to Commissioner Kraft. <laughs> Having technical difficulties, Mr. Chair. And I wanted to add my two cents since <laughs> Dave stole my thunder the first time. <laughs> Uh, but I, I can't stress the importance of this position enough. I appreciate Carlin and the HR department and working with us to get this position. Uh, a problem, I guess, that we have now is we have the money, but we don't have the people. So to get HR and CMH together on this project to help us get more staff on board so that we can help more people is paramount. And I appreciate all the efforts you guys are doing in HR and in CMH. We are trying to in innovate as much as we possibly can because – you know, previously we didn't have the money, but we had the staff. Now we have the money and we don't have enough staff. And, and as Dave said, the, the pressures and the challenges keep mounting year after year. And as we keep progressing further and further away from the height of COVID, I think the needs are just going to keep getting greater and greater. So I would appreciate the board's support on this position. And hopefully we can come back with more requests to, to help serving our, our folks and our communities. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So Commissioner Wallace was actually Commissioner Kraft. Yes. So Commissioner Wallace does not wish to speak. I second what she said. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no additional speakers, please vote. As Commissioner Kraft indicated, we are having technical <laughs> difficulties. 
so we are not going to blame the chair for anything. <laughs> okay, where's my vote? I vote yes. Motion passes 13 to 0. Thank you. Next item <coughs> is presentations advancing McComb, Diane Banks, Executive Director. A motion to receive and file, please. So moved by Nard. Support Pinsickle. I have a motion by Commissioner Nard, supported by Commissioner Van Sickle. Diane, the floor is all yours. Wonderful, thank you. Good afternoon. It must be a short presentation with all the support you had. Yes, for I don't have to say a whole lot. They said it for okay. me. Okay. Uh, thank you for this opportunity um, to present to you this afternoon. And I want to thank my um, board members and nonprofit partners that came out uh, for support this afternoon. Thank you for coming out. Uh, my name is Diane Banks. I am the executive director of Advancing Macomb. Um, we've worked with a few of you on some projects in your districts, but I look forward to future opportunities to work with all of you um, down the road on um, some um, transformational projects for Macomb County. I'd like to take about 10 minutes um, of your time for an overview of Advancing Macomb, our future strategy, and uh, propose an opportunity for us to work together to create thriving communities in Macomb County. I see the slides are up. Advancing Macomb is a 501c3 um, organization that connects and convenes resources to enhance quality of life for Macomb County communities. We do this by cementing cross-sector partnerships, identifying and attracting resources to fund community projects and programs, and bring increased visibility to Macomb County communities. Our mission is to strengthen Macomb County by connecting community challenges with high-impact solutions. And our vision is that Macomb County is a thriving, collaborative, and philanthropic community. Our organization is governed by a board of directors that's comprised of 26 accomplished business and community leaders that are driven to give back to the communities that help to define them. I encourage you to explore our website, advancingmacomb.com, to read more about each one of these remarkable individuals and make what we do possible. Just in the past three years alone, we've had significant and long-lasting impact in the county. During this time, we convened over $1 million in private and public funds for community enhancement and placemaking projects in Mount Clemens, Clinton Township, Roseville, and East Point. The picture here um, that you see in the corner of the screen is uh, the new play fountain at Shadyside Park in Mount Clemens. Seeing kids having fun in this artistic water feature makes us all eager for summer. In 2020, we partnered with Macomb County Department of Planning and Economic Development to develop and distribute $1.5 million in CARES Act grants to nonprofits throughout the county. We commissioned prominent research that uncovered Macomb County's underserved philanthropic position and has opened regional conversations regarding our call to action. We developed the Macomb County Nonprofit Roundtable, connecting more than 80 local nonprofit organizations with resources, training, funding, and opportunities for collaboration. We've increased the visibility of Advancing Macomb regionally and beyond as the go-to resource for community initiatives in the county. And last but not least, we secured resources needed to reopen the Shuttered Carnes Community Center in Mount Clemens, bringing youth sports and recreation activities back to the community. Our strategy, strategy to achieve our vision for thriving, collaborative, and philanthropic communities includes strengthening the charitable nonprofit infrastructure facilitating collaboration between public, private, and nonprofit sectors, and convening resources, including attracting more private funding for community enhancement. As mentioned in our accomplishments, last year we commissioned a research study with the Johnson Center for Philanthropy at Grand Valley State University. While we knew that the nonprofit sector was underdeveloped in Macomb County, we were all surprised to learn how big this disparity is. The results of the research have been shared broadly in the region and state and have produced a clear call to action. To recap the results of this research, as analyzed by the Johnson Center at Grand Valley State, despite ranking third in population, Macomb County's charitable nonprofit um, ecosystem lags behind every peer group both in Metro Detroit and Michigan. Compared to 10 counties in Southeast Michigan, we rank third in population but last in the number of nonprofits and near last in the assets held by those nonprofits. Zooming out in the state, we compared the 36th most, most populated counties 
and found that again, the same disparities exist. Nationally, looking at the same criteria as the state, that disparity just continues. As you can see, there's a direct relationship between the number of nonprofits and the lack of assets that can provide public benefit. These disparities will have a significant impact on the quality of life for our residents. As you are all aware, our population is growing and changing. A strong nonprofit ecosystem creates strong, thriving communities. Nonprofits are critical to address the pressing needs of our communities, and they are also critical to economic success. Something must be done now to lessen the burden of these challenges in our communities on local government. Through various sources of both uh, quantitative and qualitative research completed by Advancing Macomb, we've uncovered the disparities that exist in Macomb County's overall ability to attract private funding. Just one of these data points are shown here um, from our study with the Johnson Center. It shows that while Macomb County holds 16% of the region's population, we only receive 2% of the region's share of grants from Michigan private foundations. This extends to other sources of private funding including corporate giving. To reverse this trend and maximize the power of public-private partnership, we must first invest in strengthening the nonprofit sector. This includes investing in capacity building for nonprofits, and that includes in connecting them with tools and resources needed to grow. We also need to facilitate greater collaboration, both among existing nonprofits, as well as between public, private, and nonprofit sectors. And finally, we need to grow the pie by igniting a culture of giving in Macomb County through fund development. These are advancing Macomb's strategic priorities to enhance quality of life in Macomb County. With your help, we can mobilize more private investment. And the good news is that this recipe has already been written for how to attract private funding for community enhancement. These are a few examples all over the state. According to the Council of Michigan Foundations, there are 60 501c3 community foundations in the state. The majority of them are county-based foundations. One example here is the Roscommon County uh, Foundation in Michigan. A very rural county started their endowed funds in 1997 with a $100,000 match from the Dow Foundation. Their current assets are over 10 million and their grants in 2022 totaled more than 400,000. Our neighbors to the north are far ahead of us when it comes to both collaboration and philanthropic impact. The Community Foundation for St. Clair County was established in 1944 with four individual donations. I wanted to point out a note in their foundation's history that the need for a foundation was realized when it was discovered that many groups in Port Huron were planning overlapping projects for civic betterment. To have several organizations attempt to undertake these projects at the same time would result in confusion and overburdening of financial supporters for the project. The foundation currently has over 100 million in its assets, and in 2022 granted 4.6 million to communities and organizations in St. Clair County. There is a window of opportunity right now. Advancing Macomb is a respected, influential, and well-connected organization in the region. We are the right organization at the right time to partner with the county and be a catalyst for transformational impact in Macomb County. Our call to action is to ask for your partnership in growing the pie for Macomb County. We are uniquely positioned to leverage our corporate and philanthropic relationships to be a multiplier for public funds. There's already money on the table to potentially double or triple any allocation from the county in this effort. Through direct communications with me, these foundations would invest once they see a commitment from the county to prioritize the pressing needs of the community. A 1 to 2% portion of Federal American Rescue Plan funds managed by Advancing Macomb could be a seed investment for permanent positive change in Macomb County. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I sincerely hope that we can work together to prevent another missed opportunity and to be proactive and find solutions that are truly transformational. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Diane, can you define community foundation? Uh, it's really an, an operating model uh, for revenue 
Um, so there are many foundations that are branded as community foundations, such as the Community Foundation for St. Clair County, but there are other foundations that use a community foundation operating model to grow funds for fund development. One example of that is the Children's Foundation in Detroit that uses that community foundation operating model. They receive individual donations, corporate support. They endow that, invest it, and then grant it back out. Thank you, and thank you for all you do. Uh, Commissioner Song. Thank you, Chair. Hi, Diane. Hi. Good to see you again. Yes, you too. Um, thank you so much for this presentation. Um, you guys are doing a phenomenal job. You have a, you know, a wonderful board of uh, directors. So I think you guys are on the right track. Um, I know that uh, last year during the budget season, we weren't able to get uh, any funding for you. But uh, part of it is, you know, we have so many organizations and departments that come to us uh, during budget season. So it's really difficult to, um, you know, give everybody a piece of the pie. But I am really hopeful that, you know, with the ARPA fund that we are getting, that perhaps we can look into um, supporting uh, other initiatives. And I, th I think it's a great time for us to be able to hear from um, organizations such as yourself to kind of gauge what the needs are. Um, you did talk a little bit about the funding not coming to Macomb County. Have you guys done any needs assessments? Um, obviously, there, there is a, a great need, but I'd be really interested to find out what that gap is uh, because I do, you know, represent you know, South Macomb, which is one of the most um, underserved communities, in my opinion. And so do you have any information about that? Yes, absolutely. And it's it's complex. I and mean, it depends on where we're looking. If we're looking no. um, just simply like if you look at youth development education, that's one of the biggest disparities when it comes to um, private funding, because we have a lack of nonprofit organizations in that area. So um, if you look at, you know, graduation rate, dropout rates, and in, um, in school districts um, here in the county, you know, you, you can paint a picture around need when it comes to youth development type funding. Um, so we know that there's support there. It really, we can look at really any focus area just based on the population that we have here in Macomb County. And, and we know that it's an aging population. We know that it's, we have an influx of immigrant populations and that is gonna continue to um, change, you know, the challenges that we have in the community. So. It's, that's kind of a complex answer that just depends on, you know, what area we want to look in. But that's one thing that Advancing Macomb has been working on doing is, um, you know, creating those more needs assessments and making sure that we're communicating that to private foundations, um, corporate foundations, others, so that they know that there is need here. And we'll work alongside the communities to uh, identify those data points so that we can share that and attract more funding. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. It's my understanding a request to speak button is not functioning correctly. So I would ask if there's any other speakers to please raise your hand. Commissioner Wallace. Thank you so much. Um, I just have a quick question. So how would a, a organization, a nonprofit organization, be able to, uh, you know, sit at the table with you and the other organizations to brainstorm? Because I'm sure there are uh, organizations in Warren, but they're just, you know, like so many others, just unfamiliar of who to contact so they can branch out and be of more help to their communities. Yes, absolutely. I uh, encourage them to visit our website. Uh, we have a uh, page just developed for nonprofits to connect in with our Macomb Nonprofit Roundtable. Um, as I mentioned, we started that in 2020, right at the pandemic, to give nonprofits a, a place to go um, just to find resources. And now that's grown. We've connected with over 80 Nonprofits. We're actually currently working with the state of Michigan, the Michigan Nonprofit Association, because the state um, has allocated $50 million in relief for nonprofit organizations because they were not included in the original um, CARES Act funding. And so we're working um, on a regional hub to make sure that Macomb nonprofits take advantage of that opportunity because it is focused on small nonprofits, nonprofits less than a million in revenue, which is the vast majority of nonprofits in Macomb County. Um, so, yeah, connect with the nonprofit roundtable. We can connect those nonprofit organizations with more resources and with each other, which I know a couple of the nonprofits had mentioned has been very valuable, just knowing whether nonprofits are out there, what they're doing, um, and where they might be able to find opportunities for collaboration. And I see even more opportunity with the county departments as well. We've been meeting with the health department, 
emergency management, economic development, others to see how do we um, combine the efforts of the nonprofit organizations with what's happening at the county level as well. And thank you. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Zinner. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, sounds like you're very busy. Thank you for all that everyone does uh, in all these different areas. Um, I, my question was, when did you start? You just said that. Thank you very much. Um, you said that you work that there's a percentage of immigrants that you work with, or I'm not sure what your sentence was. How many immigrants would you say that you've worked with or dealt with? We don't directly. We are more of an intermediary organization who attracts resources and funds. There are several nonprofit organizations that are part of our roundtable group that work with um, immigrant populations. I think Emily's here. Yeah, Emily. Um, um, works um, immigrant services, Macomb Immigrant Services, and their, the, their needs are just growing. And the more we can connect with these nonprofits and understand what their challenges and needs are, the better we can help connect them with resources um, and where there might be funding opportunities or um, skilled volunteers, others that might be able to help her organization. Um, as far as you know, numbers around that, we work with SEMCOG and other data sources that we can um, you know, communicate that need. Thank you. I realize you haven't been um, around a long time, but how often do you audit or do you expect to have your audits? Yes, we, um, we are audit or organization every year. Um, even though our revenue um, does not require us to be audited, we do that because we are a philanthropic organization and we're, we're building that trust and support Great. here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other commissioners wish to speak? Chair Brown. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming, Diane, and thank you for all the groups that have taken time out of your busy days to, to, to come and be here. This is a busy time of year, people getting started New Year's plans and, and getting going and taking the time to be here is important. Um, you know, we look at the grants and see so few coming grants coming to the county. And at one time, I used to think, well, it's because Macomb County has been self-sufficient. There isn't as great of a need for Macomb County because we're financially sound, we're the unemployment rate's been pretty good, and we weren't one of those communities. But the longer I've been involved in government service, especially here at the county, there are a lot of places that we are, have underserved communities and a lot of gaps. And government can't do it all. Government can't provide all the service for everyone. And that's why it's important that our nonprofits step in and help fill the gap and partner with government to provide some of those services that we just can't provide or we or we could provide, but it would cost us much more money and, and take us more time and resource to, to get into the ground level where these nonprofits are already in those communities and to be able to access the people that we're trying to target with less effort and ultimately less money because money is the problem. We don't have money to do everything. We don't have enough money to give every group that does good things as much as they like because we don't have it and neither does the tax do the taxpayers. So I like the idea of partnering with the nonprofits to help provide services. And you've said you've talked to the health department and in other ways, and there's many other elements. I attended the nonprofit roundtable with Commissioner Wallace last year, and it was an eye-opening experience for me and perhaps for you as well to, to see so many various groups doing so many good things. It's like our volunteer recognition dinner that we have every year. So many volunteer groups. And every year, I don't, never, without fail, and I've been doing it for a long time, there's new groups out there coming forward they're doing good things in our county. So the trouble is for as a board of commissioners to make allocations to all those groups is a difficult thing. Which one do we choose? Which one is the best group to give limited resources for? But that's where possibly you could come in. If we had a group that we could send them to one group and they've got a wide variety of people on that board of directors I saw, I didn't see anybody from the county there yet, but maybe we can work on that. But we send them there and they could be vetted there and the money would go out. So the Samaritan House, which is a coalition of about 50 churches in the north end of the county provide needed food and medical assistance for people that fall between the gaps or are just not bad on their luck because of down economies. You know, they need expansion. They need, they need some physical things to be done, but where do they go for that? Perhaps if we sent them to the one Macomb, maybe there's a way for you to help them. But you have the same problem everyone else has. You have limited dollars. Right. You can only go so far. I like what I'm hearing about the ability to leverage our money, money that goes into perhaps double, maybe maybe even better than that, if we put some money into the till for that. 
Um, it's something that we ought to be really exploring because it, it'll double our resources as a county to reach out and serve the community, which we're all called to support. I mean, we look, our job as a county is to look after everyone and provide the money and budgets, along with the, you know, with other people on the county team here. So it's something I think that uh, is worth exploring. There was some talk about that during the last budget cycle, but because of, you know, priorities that we had, we, we couldn't fund, uh, we couldn't make an allocation as much as we'd like to, but um, this is a new year and uh, we'll go forward and look for opportunities to perhaps uh, support those organizations or support you and in turn be able to support so many other organizations that could partner with us and our administration to provide the services to the clientele that uh, are in need. Um, so I'm, I thank you for coming here today. It's, it's, I think we have an opportunity, commissioners, to, to for a small and relatively small investment to maybe double our money without much risk and have a, a group of board of people from across section of our county be able to vet these projects. We might send them from our districts from all across the county is something I think that's um, something we're going to do. Other counties, Oakland County, um, they embarked upon a process where they went and did a listening tour and they went all around the county meeting with all these various groups, just like the many that we have here today. And they had to decide which ones they're going to give a little seed money to. And you can understand that was a very long and complex prob process and, you know, they went through and did it. But they were losers and they were winners. That's too complicated and, and probably not the best way to do it. Think of more efficient ways to model that we may have suggested here today that we give money to one group, have it leveraged, <laughs> and let them vet those projects and push that money out with oversight. Because anytime we're giving money, we have to have you know oversight. We need members from our board on that commission to report back to us as well as be our rep eyes and ears on what's happening there. Uh, so that's what I suggest is the possibility. <coughs> so, uh, and, we'll uh, your and comment discuss. about the self-sufficient, that's one thing we talk to our funders all about, is that your investment will go a long way in Macomb County. Um, so we're not talking, you know, um, multiple year, decade long support, but we, um, that investment will grow here in Macomb. I'm very familiar with St. Clair County Community, Community Foundation from my work up there in the last 20 years with the uh, work for members of Congress and very thriving group and they are a good model to follow. And uh, um, so anyway, we'll see where it goes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chair. And to support what our chairman is saying, I'm the Macomb County designee to the Southeast Macomb United Way organization. Our last meeting was four and a half hours. We go through a line item approval of 819 different organizations for Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, in the city of Detroit. So I certainly appreciate everything you're doing. With that, I, Commissioner Kraft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dan, thank you for the presentation. I was lucky enough last year to come and visit the operation. Just you and I, we had a chance to chat and, and I really appreciate everything that you're doing. Um, we did discuss this during the budget process and my hang up was the technicalities of it. It wasn't it wasn't your organization or what you're trying to do or the mission or anything like that. And I think that's a deeper discussion that we need to have here as as the board, you know, is it ARP funds, is it county dollars, is it an appropriation? You know, can, what can we do, what can't we do so we legally can support you and your mission and the communities and the nonprofits here in Macomb to help get to like a St. Clair County Community Foundation. I too have dealt with them a lot over the years and just to see what they're able to do is fantastic. And I would love for us to be able to do that here and with our support, but I want it to be done the right way. Sure. So the more research we can do, the better. And if we get to a point where, you know, we cross all the T's and dot all the I's and we can give you some funding, I would be fully supportive of that. So thank you again for being here. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Kraft. Commissioner Van Sickle. Thank you, Chair. Good presentation, Diane. I was with Commissioners Wallace and Brown, uh, I believe it was last year, for one of your nonprofit roundtables. And the room was filled. There was a lot of energy in the room. There was a lot of networking between the various nonprofits, sharing of information. Uh, several groups um, presented to how they could help nonprofits organize, look for funds, reach out, 
and various different um, items that are important to nonprofits. It was a good day. It was a good meeting. And uh, I know you'll continue those. And I think all the nonprofits in the room, if they weren't sharing, they were certainly learning. And it was a good, a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other commissioners wish to speak? Um, Chair, I would say if um, they can keep building, 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 then we won't have to take so much of the citizens' money for things that we're paying for. So keep it going. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I think that was an endorsement, Diane. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> Any other commissioners <coughs> wish to speak? Seeing none, we have a motion to receive and file. Can we vote on this? Okay, all those in favor indicate by raising your hand saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Diane. I was going to wait for the count. <laughs> Next item, Board of Commissioners Casual Day and Volunteer Recognition Program Update. Laura Murphy, Special Projects Coordinator, a motion to receive and file. So moved by Nard. Support. I have a motion by Commissioner Nard, supported by Commissioner Wallace. Hello, Laura Murphy. Hi, Commissioners. How are you? As you guys know, I'm Laura Murphy. I am the uh, part-time special co projects coordinator for the board. So I coordinate the events and programs that uh, the board puts together. Uh, today I'm going to do a presentation on two of our programs, the casual day program and the volunteer recognition program. Um, the casual day program I'll do first. That one um, was established in 1994. So we're getting close to doing this for 30 years. Um, it was adopted. Um, via resolution by the board um, then and at as of this year uh, in total we've collected over 700,000 that has been donated to various charities over the last 28 slash 29 years as we're going into uh, this 2023 uh, calendar year. Um, so a basic overview of the casual day program is basically um, each department within the county pending department head approval um, Employees are allowed to wear jeans on Fridays and they have to give a minimum donation of a dollar. Um, this is handled in-house in each department. Uh, there's a casual, a casual day coordinator and then the department head is the supervisor. So the checks and balances is done in-house in each department. Um, they then forward their collection via check or money order, no cash is sent, um, to me in the board office and then I compile them and send the checks on to the charity of that month. Um, how the program works is each fall we send out an email to all county employees um, giving the general details of the resolution that was passed in the program just as a friendly reminder for any new employees. Um, there's a submission window usually it's from October to early December. Anyone is welcome to nominate a charity. It can be an employee, it can be word of mouth, an employee told a friend, it does not matter. Anybody can submit um, a request. There are three pieces that need to be included based on the initial resolu resolution. Uh, a letter on letterhead from the charity, a uh, certificate of the 501c3, and a um, solicitation license from the Secretary General or State Attorney General's office. Um, those are to be sent in by the deadline. If we don't have all three pieces, they cannot be considered. It is, they have to have all three pieces to be considered. Um, there are certain charities that are exempt from either of those pieces, and if they can provide a reason why they're exempt from the solicitation license on the uh, Attorney General's website, we can we can still include them then if there's a, a, a reason for exemption. Um, basically after that, once they're weeded out, all the ones that we have the, the three pieces for, um, if we have an abundance of submissions, some years we get a lot, some years we don't get as many, so if there's a lot, we will eliminate charities that were selected the year prior just so that they're not getting back to back. Um, that is the only part that isn't random about it. Um, and then they're, they're literally just put in a pile and they're pulled out and assigned a month or a day. If we have, um, like this year, we happened to get 16 submissions. We needed 16. Um, so if there was one that had uh, received it last year, they would receive it again this year. Um, I had to pull up my PowerPoint there, sorry. 
Um, so in an average year, there typically is 16 charities chosen. And the, way, the reason that there's 16 is because there are 12 calendar months in the year. And then typically four calendar months have what we call a special Friday, which is the fifth Friday of the month. Um, so 12 charities get four Fridays, and then four charities would get one Friday. So the special charities, the special day charities, are only getting one day's worth. Um, again, completely drawn by random. We can't, I can't control who gets a one day one and who gets a four Friday month. It's just the way they're pulled. Um, if there was a year that there was five months with five Fridays, then we would have 17 total pulled. It just depends on the calendar year. Um, the months that have the special days do change each year too. Um, it, it just depends on how it falls. The, um, they, there's a casual day contact person. That's who I speak to in each department and the department head if a, a department gets behind. They're supposed to forward their funds to me by the 15th of the following month. If I don't receive it, typically I give them a pretty good grace period, but if I don't receive it in a timely fashion, I will reach out to the contact person. If I don't make any headway there, I will then also contact the supervisor. Um, we have a spreadsheet we keep here that logs every single department's every month submission. It's all kept track each year. And then at the end of the year, um, I send a review to each department so they're aware of what they contributed each month based on our um, spreadsheet. Uh, but prior to the COVID pandemic, I would send the checks on to the uh, charities multiple times a month. The program has lost a little participation since more employees are working from home and working, um, are just not participating as much as used to. So I send them out at least like a minimum of once a month. Um, and again, this is monitored by the, the individual departments. I am not reaching out to departments to see if all their employees are wearing jeans, gave a dollar. It's policed within their own department. So it's just a way to, to collect money to um, be charitable with. This is our list of 2023 charities. Uh, this gets sent out usually right after the first of the year because the deadline for submissions, like I said, is in December. Uh, they're reviewed. It does take a little time to go through that. We notify the charity that they've been chosen. They receive a letter. And then all county employees are sent this list. So if someone, if an employee nominated a charity, they will not get a letter saying their charity was chosen. They would just see it reflected on this list. This list is also available on our website. Um, for 2022, which I'm still in the process of reconciling, um, I usually give everyone a little extra time in January to send in their uh, money from the previous year, and I'm still missing a couple departments, but we have collected over $10,000 in the calendar year 2022 for all the charities that were listed um, on our uh, sheet for that year. So it's a it's kind of ebbed and flowed over the years with the amount of money collected. Like I said, prior to COVID, there was um, a greater participation, um, but $10,000 for a year still isn't too shabby to send on to these um, worthy charities. So um, that does it for the casual day portion. I don't know if you want me to take any questions now or wait till I'm done with the second portion. Oh, go ahead. Okay. So the second program, oh, I bring the PowerPoint back up. The second portion uh, or program that I'm going to discuss today is the volunteer recognition program. Uh, this one too has been around for quite a while. This one was established in 1989. Um, and we honor outst outstanding volunteers in the county. And by in the county, we mean people that live in Macomb County or their volunteer work benefits Macomb County. So if they live out of county, but their volunteer work helps the community in Macomb, they can still be considered. Um, this will actually be our 34th consecutive year of the program. And we typically honor them in the month of April because it's National Volunteer Recognition Month. Um, it, beginning in 2020, in 2020, the Older Adult Advisory Committee recommended that the board recognize one individual as a senior volunteer of the year. That person has to be over the age of 60. So on the volunteer of the year application, they can indicate if they want them to also be considered for this award um, in addition to being a volunteer of the year. And then those go to the older adult advisory committee for them to review and they choose one each year. Uh, they're recognized with a special plaque. The nominating criteria for a volunteer of the year is like I said, they must work, work or volunteer or reside in Macomb County. They must be 18 or over. Senior volunteer has to be 60 or over. They have to perform a minimum of 150 service hours in the calendar year. So when we are opening, which we'll be opening it soon for 
volunteers of the year for 2022, their volunteer work has to be have been completed in 2022. We can't include any from this year. Um, typically, they have an overwhelming number of volunteer hours, um, and 150 is, is nothing for that. So there's usually not a problem there. Um, we will recognize a person m multiple times, but there has to be a minimum of five years in between. Um, if they've continued their great work, we don't want to let that not be recognized. So we will, but there has to be a five-year gap uh, in between. Um, the nomination form, this is, will be sent out to all counties' employees. It will be posted on our website, and we also do a mass mailing to all local churches, uh, schools, anywhere that would have a large volunteer base, hospitals, um, anyone that calls and requests to be on the list. It's just a master list. We send it out, a hard copy letter and a hard copy application. It can also be completed online via Google form, and that is linked on the website. Um, this year, our nomination forms will be um, sending them out actually probably by next week, and they'll be due by March 10th. Um, that gives us plenty of time to review them. We do have to, again, make sure they meet the criteria of residing or volunteering and the age and the hours. Uh, and this year, we're reverting back to a, a format that we did years ago, which is where we honor them in an evening reception, and this time it will be at Freedom Hill um, on Thursday, April 27th. Uh, for this year, since we're returning to the dinner format, uh, two volunteers from each district will be selected um, and one senior volunteer. Each person that is selected will be um, allowed to bring a guest, one guest, to the dinner. Um, once we receive all the nominations and have narrowed it down, we will be um, sharing with each commissioner so they can review the nominations in their district um, and they can help us select the two that they want to honor this year. Um, you are also able to nominate um, anyone within your district or within any, another commissioner's district if there's somebody that you, a volunteer you want to nominate. Um, so yeah, that, that sums up the volunteer recognition program. Um, but I can take questions on either the volunteer recognition or the casual day program if anyone has any. Well, first, before I call on anyone, Laura, thank you and thank the employees of Macomb County for their participation in this program and your work on the volunteer program. Thank you. Um, I don't know if our system's working, but I have Commissioner Perner's name up. Did you wish to speak? Floor is yours. Question on the organizations that you're giving money to or you're asking, many of them are not in Macomb County. Do they have branches here that are associated with this? Um, they, they may, but that's not a requirement to be a, a charity that's chosen. Troy, Michigan, Southfield, Michigan, Rochester, Michigan. They may be their mailing address, but they may serve um, anybody in Macomb, Oakland. Sometimes it's not just they're limiting their to that county, uh, but it isn't a requirement. Even if they only serve the county that they're located in, they could still be recognized as a charity. Outside Macomb, be it Wayne, Oakland, Park, and all can apply. There are, um, I should say, there are employees that nominate um, organizations that maybe are near and dear to their heart. They helped a family member, and they may not serve only Macomb or Macomb at all, and we still would consider them because they've been nominated by somebody that uh, felt they should be. So typically, though, I'm trying to think. I, I don't really, I can't recall since I've been doing it, um, I don't recall having a charity that specifically did not serve Macomb County. Um, so even if they weren't based in Macomb County, they may still serve Macomb County. Is that all, Commissioner? Thank you. Any other commissioner wish to speak? Well, I just want to thank you again, Lauren, and point out that our chairman, as of today, could now qualify for the senior volunteer <laughs> program. <laughs> Well, I can't no, let that. No comment from you will be accepted. Uh, uh. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. You're we welcome. have a motion to receive and file. Please raise your hand and vote. Yes. Yes. Any opposed? <laughs> that is approved. Next item is public participation. This is an opportunity for the public to participate on any Macomb County business for a maximum of three minutes on any issue. Anyone from the, yes ma'am, please come forward.
Good afternoon. Um, my name is Karen Tucker. I'm a Sterling Heights resident and a Precinct 28 delegate. Great job to all of those who presented before me. You do great things in the community that make us all proud. Best regards in all your noble endeavors. To the board, as one of your voting constituents, I appreciate the opportunity to speak today, but just as important to have you listen. As United States citizen and registered Michigan voter, I am here today to voice my concern about the January 26 Macomb County Republican Party Convention. Simply put, from my perspective, I believe the Macomb County Republican Party Chair Mark Fortin did his sincere best in conducting the meeting in the most fair and honest way possible. Was he perfect? No. Was he misleading or disingenuous at his meeting? Proceedings? No. Based upon my observations at the J26 meeting, it was and is my perception that there were several individuals who from the onset of the meeting and throughout the meeting conducted themselves in such a way as to disrupt the meeting by continuously shouting and laughing loudly, all out of order. I don't know these people personally, but many appeared at times to gravitate to Eric Casilia, who ran unsuccessfully against Mark Fortin and made statements to all present that he is still considered the Republic, Michigan Republican, uh, Macomb County Republican Party chair. Um, and he's considered by the state um, Michigan GOP. I don't see that on their website, however. This meeting here today is a civil one. I doubt that you would allow such things that went on at the Macomb County Convention, a Republican Party Convention, and allow that sort of unrest to occur. It has also been reported that one of our Macomb County elected officials, Sylvia Gratt, filled out multiple slips for delegates to attend the state convention despite, despite being told by another delegate she was not allowed to do so. I perceive Eric and other disruptors as disingenuous instigators whose mission is to cause legal delegates like myself to feel disenfranchised. While at a fundraiser for Tudor Dixon in May or June 22, Eric Castillo signed me up to be a precinct delegate and he advised me that and promised me that I would be a delegate to the state convention. He would make sure that I would attend. I was, however, selected by the Macomb County Republican Party to attend the convention. At the convention, Eric arrived early uh, in August, this was in August of 2022, and seated his illegal delegates. I was, as other delegates- you have 30 seconds. Please conclude, you have 30 seconds. Okay, thank you. It is my perception that there may be sinister motives with regards to how the February 17, 18 Michigan um, Republican Party State Convention will be conducted, including proposals to unseat those Macomb County delegates who were duly elected, as well as change the way we vote. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Any, anyone else from the public wish to be heard? Good afternoon. My name is Michelle Franzen. I am a Macomb County resident. I am an elected delegate in Precinct 27 in Shelby Township. I am here today because as a notary, I witnessed a signed affidavit for another delegate at our Macomb County Convention on January 26th at the Shelby Gardens. Um, the concern, it concerns the conduct of one of your fellow commissioners. I'd like to take a moment to explain the nature of this indiscretion. The delegates in the attendance were given a form to fill out to validate their credentials and to indicate that they were available to attend the state convention on February 18th in Lansing. The directions given were that the forms were to be filled out by any and all delegates in attendance that wished to go to the state convention. The instructions were simple. If you were physically present in the room, fill out the form. Once the forms had been turned into the chairman, there was an announcement made by the parliamentarian asking if Stanley Gratt was in attendance. There were about 250 delegates in the room. The announcement was made several times from the podium with the microphone. There was no response to this request. At this point, it was determined in order to proceed with the convention, the credentials team would need to verify the presence of each delegate and make sure the slips matched the check-in list so that the validity of the convention credentials would not come into question. This took the better part of an hour. 
During the time while we were all waiting, I was asked to notarize a statement from a delegate who witnessed Commissioner Gratt filling out a form in which she had written Stanley Gratt's name on it. The eyewitness stated she had confronted Commissioner Gratt and explained to her that she was not authorized to submit a form for anyone except herself. I have a copy of the affidavit and I can submit it to you if you'd like it for your records. The reason I bring this incident to your attention is that I believe accountability to our constituents is extremely important for all elected officials. In regard to this particular incident, if the instructions were not clear during the convention, a delegate has the right to state point of information and the chairman must stop and clarify the instructions or the procedure. A point of information was not made and Commissioner Grott did not notify anyone that she had submitted a form on behalf of Stanley Grott. When the chairman was calling Stanley Grott's name to verify attendance, the opportunity to state that she had made a mistake and misunderstood the instructions would have been appropriate and honorable. The act of forging credentials is a serious accusation and I believe requires the board to investigate in order to retain the trust of your constituents, I ask that you will hold honesty and integrity as a standard and admonish the conduct of fellow commissioners when they do not uphold this fundamental principle. The residents of Macomb County deserve trustworthy elected officials on every level. Thank you for your time. Thank you. For information under our rules of procedure, we don't respond to comments made during public participation, just for the record. Good afternoon and thank you. My name is Sheila Pomeransky and I'm a Shelby Township resident. I am a precinct delegate and I attended the Macomb County Republican Party Convention last week Thursday, January 26th. I am here today to speak about the incident involving your fellow commissioner, Sylvia Grote. I witnessed the confusion and agitation of all the precinct delegates, or many of them, that was caused by Commissioner Grote's actions to knowingly cast a record for someone who was not present at the convention. It is clear from previous speakers and the notarized affidavit that Commissioner Grote was given a clear understanding that she could not submit a record to go to the state convention for somebody who was not present. Her decision to knowingly cast a record for someone who was not present caused a significant delay in the convention for nearly an hour. From my recollection, this convention adjourned shortly before 11.30 p.m., partly due to Commissioner Grote's deliberate actions and the need for additional verification processes. These actions demonstrate not only serious concerns for Commissioner Grote's ethics, but also have potential felony implications that must be investigated under the rule of law and order. The Michigan Penal Code, um, Act 328 of 1931, number 750.249 states, a person who utters and publishes as true a false, forged, altered, or counterfeit record, instrument, or other writing listed in section 248, knowing it to be false, altered, forged, or counterfeit, with intent to injure or defraud, is guilty of a fel felony punishable by imprisonment from not more than 14 years. I have a copy of this penal code that I will leave at the desk if anybody would like to view it, as well as 750.248. I would like to submit them for the record. With that being said, every commissioner on this board took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and our state of Michigan Constitution. Now that you have been made of this potential criminal activity, my question is, how do each and every one of the board of commissioners intend on pursuing and resolving the matter? It needs to be investigated and a part of the Board of Commissioners records as to what your plan is to address this forgery and potential criminal act. I look forward to your responses. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wish to be heard? Good afternoon. I don't know whose birthday it is that I missed that part. Sorry, I came in late, but happy birthday. Yes. <laughs> Okay, happy birthday. I'll spare you from singing it. <laughs> I am also a precinct delegate. I was just elected. I was at the convention last, the 26th. I did not see what these ladies say they saw. I was not in that part of the room. However, I was a voting delegate, and what we do at the convention <coughs> is you vote on a slate of delegates who are going to be voting delegates and a slate who are going to be alternates. We were presented with the slate and the alternate at probably 10, 30, 11 o'clock. 
And we voted on it, passed it. Somehow, that slate did not end up at the Michigan GOP. An altered slate of voting delegates and an altered slate of alternates ended up there. I don't, I'm not asking anybody about their politics. That doesn't matter. I've watched all you guys today vote on things. How would you feel if later on you read the record of what you voted on and you see you were removed from that record? I don't know what to do with this, but it's, it, Macomb County is getting a really bad reputation with the politics of everything. I'm sorry to bring politics into it, but it, it, it is. I don't know if there's anything we can do about this, but I know like they were saying, it was a lot of confusion. I don't know if it was done purposely or not. I can't speak to any of that. I'm just saying the state has altered a, the slate of the voting delegates and an altered slate of the alternate delegates. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wish to be heard? Once, twice, public participation is now closed. This is gonna be interesting because we're gonna try commissioner's comments and none of the is it my, back my up? Mine is all messed up. Let me get to mine. All hands. Uh, any commissioner like to speak under commissioner's comments? <coughs> Bless you. I would commissioner like to Van Sickle. Since we gave, sorry, since we gave a plug to a couple other events. Um, my wife and I met Judge Michael Warren a number of years ago when he and his daughter Leah started Patriots Week, which is in September. They have a great organization. They've gotten both federal and state level legislative um, recognition of this event. And they are having their uh, primary fundraiser in March. And if anybody's interested in supporting a patriotic group I suggest that you go to uh, patriotweek.org and investigate them and possibly consider attending their fundraiser. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Zinner. Thank you, Chair. Well, first, I want to say um, three of these ladies were here yesterday, um, or two of them were there, and they stayed, and I didn't know who they were. I went over to say hello to them, and they said they were delegates. And then another lady came. I had not met physically met any of those ladies. I couldn't tell you two of the ladies' names, sorry. I know you gave them to me yesterday. So um, people would have seen me yesterday speaking to those ladies, but I want you to know I had not spoken to them before that. I just went over to greet people who were still sitting there. There was nothing, I did nothing sinister or asked, I never asked anyone to come here. I want that to be known to everyone. Secondly, um, um, People are, I am getting calls from delegates that are frustrated, especially with the Republican Party in Lansing. They're really frustrated with them. Secondly, and thirdly, um, there's a tradition has started, at least the two years that I've been here, um, being Sergeant at Arms previously, uh, the Commissioner Kleinfeld, who had seen how it went for Sergeant at Arms, um, would always start with money that would start off the kitty that we have to for things that we need as commissioners for um, There are things that the sergeant at arms will purchase if there is a family member that passes and things like that. So she would always start off waving money so that I would then have money for the, to start the kitty so the other commissioners would remember to pay the sergeant at arms. So I'm going to do what Veronica did for me and say to the new sergeant at arms, we now are going to be paying $40 this year because there was money from last year. So, Sergeant at Arms, here you go with your first. And everyone will now follow as quickly as they can. And that's all I have to say, and thank you all very much.
Barb, I want to thank you for setting the example again this year because I know you had to do a little bit of calling last year to some of our fellow colleagues to get this accomplished. So Sylvia, she's got a hammer ready to go um, <laughs> if you need that to make these collections. And I, I just want to uh, appreciate you coming, Barb, the explanation. Thank you for that. I don't think that was required, but that's just my opinion. Um, we have, as a body, no jurisdictional control or authority or process to deal with what happened at the Republican convention or any other convention. That's outside of our scope completely. Um, so I appreciate uh, what transpired there. I don't know what transpired at the Democratic convention, but we make and have committed to making a concerted effort on this board to keep partisan politics out of this chamber. We want to work as a team. Our chairman's slogan is one team, one goal, one mission, and that's what we're attempting to do. So that is just clarification. Uh, Sylvia, did you hit the button to speak? Yes, I did. Can I? Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, that issue has nothing to do with the county. Uh, anybody at the convention can uh, sign nomination uh, for somebody to go to convention, even if it's a guest. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Excuse me. Sylvia, address the chair, not the audience, please. So that anybody can thing. go to the convention. Somebody can nominate them, can write the name. It was done before, and it's no, nothing new. If you, didn't know, if you didn't know anything about that, then you know now. Uh, Sylvia? Uh, really, that's not a subject matter, even under Commissioner's comments for us to deal with. I appreciate under Robert's Thank Rules you, of Chair. Order and the Open Meetings Act during public participation, comments can be made. We typically don't respond to them, even if they're personal. All right, sorry. So, sorry. Point of Thank order. You. Mr. Perno would like a point of order. Mr. Romano? Care of my situation. Thank you, sir. I think <laughs> way in advance of that. Let's have some cake. So Wait, happy birthday to me. the chair to Excuse the chairman me. Brown. Excuse happy me, birthday. I have commissioners that still want to speak. Oh. Commissioner Romano. I think we ought to sing happy birthday to the chair. Excuse <laughs> me, you're out of order. <laughs> Commissioner, well. <laughs> Commissioner Nard. Well, I wanted to sing happy birthday to our <laughs> board chair. You. <laughs> way ahead of you. Go ahead. Everybody gonna sing. I can't yeah, we're gonna jump in. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Yeah, it's Mr. also my understanding that Commissioner Lucido has a birthday coming up soon as well, so we should sing to both. Hey, mine in August. <laughs> okay. And we miss uh, Commissioner Nard, Wallace. Would you lead us in happy birthday yes. to everybody. Happy birthday to you, especially Don Brown. Happy birthday to you, Sarah. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you, Sarah. Happy birthday, Sarah. Happy birthday, Sylvia, Jim. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, birthday to you. To you. With that, that a motion to adjourn to the order. Support center. We have support. All in favor, please raise your hands. Aye. Aye. Meeting is concluded. We just committed a historic event. I've never in 30 years heard a happy birthday song sung at the chamber.